Hi again, everyone. Welcome to another episode of RV Business Capital Talk, sponsored by the DICOR Corporation. I'm Rick Kessler. He's Sherman Goldberg. We're RV Business. And joining the two of us today, Debbie Brunaforte and Jeffrey Hirsch, together of Campers in RV. Congratulations, the two of you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the news broke today that uh, Campers in RV is acquiring little dealer, little prices. It represents Campers Inn's westward expansion, and it represents, uh, Debbie, I don't know, it's a dream come true for you, I bet. Yes, it is. It is. I'm absolutely thrilled. This is such a great partnership, and I look forward to talking with you about it. Thank you for having us on. C congratulations, by the way, uh, formally. Um, it's a, it's a, a big moment for the industry at large. Uh, uh, people who have watched your respective companies evolve uh, over the years. Um, they did, how, when, how far, when did this germinate, this <laughs> transaction? Can we tell them? Yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> well, I would say probably over the last six months. All right, talking on and off. It might have been in the works for years, though. I mean, maybe 30 years or so. Yeah, really, it happened very quickly. We have talked, you know, over the years and especially over the last six months, Jeff's been talking about the Western expansion and about they want to be a national company and they want to do the Western expansion. And, you know, would we be interested in doing that with them? So there's been a little bit more talk. It's surprising, though, how quick it happened, because when you know that you're dealing with someone that you can trust, all you need is a handshake and let's go. And so we really decided, made the decision just a few weeks ago, and here we are. Oh, wow. Yeah, I also was surprised at the speed of which this all came together. And, you know, Debbie and I have known each other for over 30 years, you know, whether it was RBDA board of directors or 20 groups. So we knew the little dealer, little price of story, you know, without having to go through the transition of buyer and seller negotiating and trying to figure out if it was the right culture. This was the right culture from the very start for us. Uh, companies that go back in both cases to the to what years? 1966. His parents started their company the same year that my parents started this company. That's amazing. Yeah. Um. And uh, so, uh, for the for the respective future of both of you, but for Campers Inn as a as one entity, what? Well, Describe how this goes uh, in the future here. How, how do you manage this additional uh, uh, acquisition? Well, from our standpoint, I mean, we probably have to go ahead and, and just think about what our long-term vision is, all right, of this partnership, all right? And Campers in has always wanted to go west. But we truly never had the platform to accomplish that because, you know, logistically, it's just very difficult, right? You're over 2,000 miles away and you're in a different time zone. And there are just challenges that we'd have to overcome in order to accomplish that. And what Debbie's dealership and her organization provided essentially is an opportunity for us to have essentially a mini corporate office. Debbie, by the way, is our newest our VP, all right? So she's gonna be responsible for helping develop the West Coast. And to have this all come together, I think maybe that's why it happened so quickly because we both shared in the vision that, you know, we've done a lot within the industry and we both believe that there's plenty more to do and that the combined organizations will just go ahead and get us to maybe that, that, that long-term vision. And it, it it takes you as a as an organization from uh, thirty to thirty three. My math that is, that is correct. Okay, thirty three stores, 
making you, well, retaining your position, uh, Camp Brazil is one of America's largest RV dealer groups. That's a given, right? Um, uh, in, in, the, in the consolidation at retail has been gaining speed uh, monthly. I think it's fair to say over the, over the last, what, four years uh, or so. Um, what's your take, both of you, on, on uh, this consolidation and what it means for the market? Well, first, I would like to touch, if I may, Sherman, a little bit on you had mentioned the consolidation. And one of the things that in the volunteer work that I've done in the industry with RVDA and throughout the industry, one of the things that I've always endeavored to do is to provide assistance and help to the independent RV dealer. And I have a firm belief in the value of a family owned and operated company the integrity, the customer care, the care for the team and the employees, everything that comes with a family owned and operated company. So for me, this is the best of both worlds. We, get we can continue with a family owned and operated business and company. And I invite all of the other dealers that would like to join us on this exciting journey to please reach out and let us know. You can answer the real question. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't know. I, I think that you took every single word out of my mouth. I mean, that's exactly, you know, how I see it as well, Debbie, is that um, our work on, on the board and, and various functions within the RV industry, it's personal to us. You know, I mean, when we look at, you know, the industry, it's a cottage industry. Our parents started our business. All right. And uh, we grew up you know, doing every detail that had to be done in order to get to the point that we are today. Oh, that's right. Right. Yeah. No and, one has uh, cleaned more toilet, toilets at this dealership than me. Right. And I installed a lot of hitches. And I have to tell you, I wasn't really good at installing hitches. <laughs> I think my dad couldn't wait to get me out of the service department, right? And then I had to do inventory. But anyways, besides that, um, yeah, no, I, I think that um, what you said, Debbie, about being family-owned and about being personal, and um, looking to go ahead and expand, um, you know, to the West Coast, it just means a lot to us, right? And it means, you know, giving other dealers the opportunity to go ahead and, and maintain their legacy. Legacy is important to us, especially when you consider the roots. And there's a lot of independent dealers out there that legacy matters. And we truly believe that we're the acquirer of choice because when we look to go ahead and manage our businesses, quite frankly, we're not looking quarter by quarter. You know, there's nothing driving, you know, essentially a quarter's um, financials, whether it's top line revenue or bottom line. The result is, is that we can make long-term favorable decisions in the best interests of all stakeholders. Our stakeholders being our employees, our customers, our manufacturer partners, our banks, all the constituency of a dealership, of an independent dealership. Go ahead, Rick, go ahead. No, no, I was just gonna, you mentioned Debbie's role um, um, going forward. Uh, does the dealership name change at all or, or any thoughts on that yet? You wanna talk about that? I'll be glad to take that. <laughs> little dear, little prices um, is synonymous with with the RV industry, okay, especially in the Arizona market. Um, we're proud of that name and where we see uh, there will be a transition over time, but immediately it stays little dealer, little prices. And we'll probably add a tagline, little dealer, little prices, a proud campers and company. And then in time we'll transition but we certainly wouldn't want to go ahead and abandon such a successful brand in the RV industry. And in future acquisitions, even here in Arizona, probably we just go ahead with the campers in name because we need to grow that name and that identity out here in this part of the country. Do you anticipate, uh, go ahead, I'm sorry. Do, do, you, do you anticipate that, the, and I'm going back to where I was to an extent, uh, the consolidation or the growth of dealer groups to continue? So 
I believe that there will always be a place for a really good, well-run independent dealership, a, a single store, a couple of stores, whatever it may be. There will always be a place for that. And I'll always do my part to help those people succeed. I've always believed in that. I still believe in that. And I will still work towards that, that mission. I do believe that there will be more consolidation and, and that's okay. You know, things evolve. And I shared with you before, one of my favorite quotes is, it's not the strongest of the species that survive, nor is it the most intelligent. It's the most adaptable. So things that are outside of our control, we don't need to worry about that. We just need to adapt. And we need to, and if we're quicker and better at adapting than our competitors, we win. So this to me though, was the best of both worlds. You know, I can, I can join a very large company, one of the largest companies that's in the nation and have all the benefits that that brings and still be a family owned and operated culture and business. And as Jeff was alluding to before, we're family owned and operated. So our number one thing is we do the right thing. Even if it costs some money or has other consequences, the number one rule is just do the right thing. And we can still do that. Almost uh, <laughs> eloquent, uh, if I don't say so myself. Um, Rick, do we do it? I mean, we're somewhere around uh, uh, what's our normal time duration for an interview. Are we done or you got more? I, I think I think so. I think we can end it. Um, just two two very quick things. Once again, uh, Sherman already said it, but allow me to say congratulations too. Like we said earlier, it's it's really cool to see two awesome people get together like this. This is great. We think so too. Thank you. We do. <laughs>